Good morning, kindergartners. Happy Friday. I hope that you're going to have a great Friday and have fun with your families. Maybe get to go outside and run around or ride a bike. I um, have really enjoyed getting to see all of you over video on Flipgrid this week, and I'm looking forward to talking to you more um, today and next week too. I miss you so much. Today we're going to read a story called A Sick Day for Amos McGee. And this book was written by Philip C. Stead and illustrated by Aaron E. Stead. And this is one of Miss Downey's favorite children's books. A Sick Day for Amos McGee. Amos McGee was an early riser. Every morning when the alarm clock clanged, he swung his legs out of bed, swung, swapped his pajamas for a fresh pressed uniform. He would wind his watch and set a pot of water to boil, saying to the shit girl, a spoonful for my oatmeal, please, and two for my teacup. Belly full and ready for the workday, he'd amble out the door. Amble is another word for walk. Every day, Amos waited for the number five bus. Next stop, City Zoo, the bus driver would call. 6 a.m., right on time, he'd reply. Amos had a lot to do at the zoo, but he always made time to visit his good friends. He would play chess with the elephant, who thought and thought before making a move. He would run races with the tortoise who never ever lost. Sit quietly with the penguin who was very shy. Lend a handkerchief to the rhinoceros who always had a runny nose. And at sunset, he would read stories to the owl, who was afraid of the dark. One day, Amos awoke with the sniffles, the sneezes, and the chills. He swung his achy legs out of bed, curled them back again, and said, Ugh, I do not think I will be going into work today. He's feeling pretty sick. Meanwhile, at the zoo, the animals waited for their friends. The elephant arranged his ponds and polished his castles. The tortoise stretched his legs and limbered up to get ready for the race. The penguin sat patiently all by himself. The rhinoceros worried that his allergies were worsening. And the owl perched atop a tall stack of storybooks, scratching his head with concern. Where is Amos? The animals wondered. I want you to think, how do you think these animals are feeling that when Amos didn't show up? How do you think that made them feel? Do you think it made them feel happy or sad? Do you think it made them feel worried or confused or lonely? Let's see what happens. Later that day, do 
You see where they're leaving? It's a city zoo. They're waiting at the bus stop. Where do you think they're going? They're getting on bus number five. What are they gonna do? Can you whisper in your hand what you think they're gonna do? Ready, go. All right, let's see. <gasps> Hooray, my good friends are here. Did they go to visit Amos? The elephant prepared a game of chess. Amos thought and thought before making a move. I'm too tired to run races today, said Amos to the tortoise. Let's play hide and seek instead. The tortoise hid inside his shell. Amos hid beneath his covers. Play hide and seek. Amos yawned. <sighs> the penguin and said, I could use a nap. The penguin sat quietly, keeping Amos's feet warm. Ah, choo! Amos awoke with a sneeze. The rhinoceros was ready with a handkerchief. I'm beginning to feel much better. Thank you, said Amos to his friends. He swung his legs out of bed. Perhaps we'll share a pot of tea. <coughs> Excuse me. Amos wound his alarm clock. It's getting late, he said. After all, we have a morning bus to catch. So Amos said good night to the elephant and good night to the tortoise and good night to the penguin and good night to the rhinoceros and good night to the owl who, knowing that Amos was afraid of the dark, read a story aloud before turning off the light. The end. My friends, in this story, Amos is always a really good friend to his all of his animal friends at the zoo. But then, when he is um, feeling sick, the animals wonder where he is and feel maybe a little worried or concerned. And so they go and see if they can help him. And do they help him feel better? Yeah. Have you ever helped somebody when they needed something? What have you done? Can you tell someone what your favorite part of this book was? You can either tell me right now, or you can go and tell your family. All right. I hope you have a great rest of your Friday. Once you've done, you're done reading both of these books today, make sure to vote for which one was your favorite, and then go to Flipgrid. There's a link for a Flipgrid video where you're going to think about all 10 books that we read this week and pick which one was your favorite from the whole week. And then you are going to, um, you're going to make me a video and tell me which one was your favorite from the whole week, why you liked it, and what your favorite part was. I'll talk to you later. Bye, friends. I miss you.